Joining us now, we actually have Senator Brian King. He just walked up to the table. Senator King, welcome, sir. Hey, Carl. Yeah, sorry. We got to flip it on. My bad. Oh, we're on now. Yeah, there okay. we go. Uh, so I know you got to be disappointed that this failed. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to stop. Let me just get back to Governor Asa Hutchison in a minute. He had the appropriation bill a year ago in the fiscal session and said, criticized me for not voting for it, okay, that it was going to cause all these problems. Yeah. I said at the time, it's Medicaid's unsustainable. Too many people on Medicaid, a lot of problems at DHS that need to be addressed before we vote on this. Well, they do the line item veto scheme, and they get what they want. You go around the Arkansas Constitution. Four months later, he says, there's too many people on Medicaid. It's unsustainable. Then he comes through this session, Paul, and ups the DHS appropriation bill a hundred and something million dollars. I mean, how do you have such a bad spending program, all these problems that you say is unsustainable, and then you come back and ask for more money? Yeah, and you're exactly right. That's what he's done. And I think our uh, contribution, our 5% this year from state money is going to be like over $109 million. Yeah, uh, it's for a this lot of insurance money. scam, yeah. for these big insurance companies, so they can hire the best friends of Jonathan Dismay, you know, as wow. a lobbyist. I mean, folks, if we... There is no way. A lot of people said about Trump was drain the swamp. Let's get let's get the corruption out of politics. Let's start exposing things. That's what this bill does. We will never be able to make efficiencies in Medicaid spending and roll people back as long as we have we don't have we when we don't have transparency. Yeah. In what's going on? I mean, these companies like Blue Cross Blue Shield, they get hundreds of millions of dollars a year. They didn't take a portion part of that money. Spend it on lobbyists to be able to come up here and get your tax dollars. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, it is unbelievable. Let me get your reaction to Michelle Gray. I want to play this audio clip for you. First up, we have uh, we have Charlotte Douglas uh, asking a question. Representative Douglas, you're recognized for a question. This mystifies me uh, because I'm, I'm, I've not gotten one email or call in opposition to this bill, um, I, I just don't I don't see it out there. I don't hear it out there. I think it is something that brings you know some transparency. It's a report of money spent, and like I said, I've not gotten one call. I've not gotten one email that I've been able to identify. There may be in there, and I may have not seen it, but I don't see the pushback. Out, maybe outside the legislature, and I, I, this, is there anyone you know signed up to speak against it today? I just wonder. Well, the pushback has been from the big money special interest people. Okay. Representative Gray, thank you. You're, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess I'm big money interest people since I'm pushing back. Um, yeah. So I mean, that's Ms. Gray. She was. She was. Uh, not pleased with that characterization it didn't sound like why was she so opposed to the bill well if you look at what she said she said two different things if you listen to the whole tape on one hand she's criticizing the bill because it's not broad enough how come you didn't put doctors in here how come you didn't put dentists in here you know and then later in the in the in the in the discussion she starts criticizing it's too broad yeah you know, it's it's like that thing, you know, all mixed up like concrete. I yeah. Mean, like concrete, all mixed up and unable to change. So in the discussion, State Representative Michelle Gray explained, uh, you know, more about why she was against the bill. It sounded like Thank this. you, Mr. Chair. So I'm just going to present a, a scenario, another scenario here, just to show it. it's not so much about the transparency piece as it's about the wording of the bill, the language of the bill is bad, so you take, say, an Arkansas State Police Commissioner, that commissioner's spouse, and it's so, it's so complicated, I had to write it down. The commissioner's spouse is a nurse at the heart hospital. So now okay. Mr. Commissioner must file okay. a Medicaid disclosure statement. Okay. Because okay, let me address that right fast. Okay. okay this is this was the, one of the craziest things I'd, I'd, I'd heard. Okay, if you're an Arkansas State Police Commissioner, wouldn't you be the one in charge of law enforcement agency that could be investigating the Medicaid fraud? You would think. Uh, I don't know. I mean, literally, I was like, well, it, it, it just exactly shows how they can do things well, there, funnel it money, seems like hire spouses, yeah. and yet you would have to, if you were the Arkansas State Police Commissioner, 
and your wife went to work for a Medicaid entity, you would have to disclose it. A Medicaid provider that could get hundreds of millions of your tax dollars. If today, and I told her, if my spouse went to work for UAMS or one of these others, we have to disclose it. I said, why do you have one standard on one, one yeah. end and on another and standard preventing it for this you one. can give these? Well, she goes on to say that the that this is going to kill jobs. As the salary transaction between his wife and the hospital was more than $2,000. And now the commissioner must include uh, how much that he spent at the Hart Hospital was paid to lobbyists, or how much the Hart Hospital paid to lobbyists. Now also the Hart Hospital has to file a statement because they employ the commissioner's wife you understand i mean the complexities just to like what representative gonzalez was saying in this bill are very unforeseen and they're going to be very far reaching so what's going to happen is this mr commissioner finds out and he doesn't want his wife to lose her job because heart hospital says i, well, I don't want to hire someone that's going to make me have to file this disclosure statement they're going to let her go mr commissioner then stuck with a wife who loses a job uh, getting off the board, I've now got a governor who's having problems appointing people because of the disclosure forms and all the problems that come with it. Now, I want to stop right there. What does that mean? She said that if this passes, the governor is going to have a hard time appointing people because they might have to disclose things. What does that even mean? That's, I don't even know how that even makes sense. I'll say, so I don't know how much the heart hospital, or let's just say a Medicaid provider, gets hundreds of millions or millions of your tax dollars. They shouldn't have to disclose that they hire uh, the spouse of a government employee like a, a police commissioner who would be investigating that. I mean, they would, shouldn't have to and disclose so, so that. So her example, if you think about it, of course they should have to of disclose. Of course they should have to disclose that. But she says that they just might not hire her in the first place if they have to disclose it. You know what, Paul? <laughs> if <laughs> this is just gets unbelievable. If... I sit there and go do a thousand dollars work for a middle school or a junior high. I have to disclose it, and these people all of a sudden just say, "You know what? We don't want to expose. Exp you know, we don't want to disclose it." You think it has to do? I mean, she is right. It it, it it is complicated, but so is Medicaid, right? We're talking about eight billion dollars. It's not that complicated. It is not complicated. To say, you know what, Medicaid provider, if you're going to take our money and you hire the spouse of a legislator, you need to disclose it. That's not hard. Yeah. That's not hard. And there's a lot of ways you can funnel money. But the second part of the bill, too, that the lobbyists were circling around is is like the nursing homes. They they had people all around that committee. And they were getting text messages. I saw yeah, they Michelle all, Gray's phone yeah, on the videos getting, lighting up, as well yeah. as Jeff Wardlaw's getting phone messages. You know messages. what? They were all getting text messages. You could sit there and watch the video and see that. I'm like, why don't the nursing homes come here and and uh, and uh, why don't the nursing homes come here and face me? Because they don't want to face Brian King one on one. You know, I mean, it, it just it just is it is crazy. It's half the cost. We have a cap on assisted living places. In you know numbers in Arkansas, it's half the cost the taxpayers keep somebody in assisted living overall, and yet we have a cap on that. Yeah, and they can go to the nursing home for a lot more money. Speaking of Jeff Wardlaw, he probably said one of the maybe the biggest hypocritical statements I have ever. Oh heard. my gosh! I'm going to listen to it, but this is a Democrat, newly turned Republican, chair of the Public Health Committee. But we're this is a state agencies committee audio. He's on the committee. This is what he said why he was opposed to your bill, Brian. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I've been uh, texting back and forth with a few agencies here in state oh, he, government. He admits it. There we go. As you guys know, I'm pretty consistent, no voter on big government issues. And I had this discussion uh, the other day with somebody about this bill, and I got confirmation of it now. If this bill passes in its current form, it's going to create a whole new division at DHS. A whole new which division. Is, let me remind you, big government. That agency is going to be responsible for having all these disclosure forms filed. So I just want to remind you guys that want to go home and say that you're for small government and lessening government, that when you vote this through, you're voting for big government. I mean, Jeff Wardlaw, Jeff Wardlaw supports Obamacare Medicaid expansion. Voted to put record numbers of people on Arkansas Medicaid. 
record numbers of people in Arkansas. And Medicaid. he's for More small people. government. He's for small government. Is yeah. that even true? DHS is texting him saying this will create an entire you know new division of DHS. You look at all the fraud that's happened. A DHS employee, a high-level DHS employee, pleads guilty to fraud. They Food stamp fraud. There is so many. There's people, headlines all the time of being waste and, fr- and fraud and abuse over at DHS. They ought to be the people coming wanting that. Yeah. But they're not. I just found out, Paul, DHS wasted $10 million more on eligible enrollees. Really? Uh, ineligible enrollees. Your tax dollars, $10 million. And Jeff Wardlaw wants to talk about big government. Yeah. It's DHS, ridiculous. a whole new division. Well, if that's the case, we got a lot of people doing business with legislators and government people. And uh, yeah. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. These yeah. people... Uh, so uh, we're talking with Senator Brian King, uh, and I want to say I, I want to play one more clip, and then I want to just ask some more. So there's some headlines today I want to get your comment on. But Representative Republican Representative Gonzalez, he was against your bill as well. Towards the end, he explained again why he was not for this. But then Charlotte Douglas chimed. You know, it, it feels like sometimes that we're, we're we have to prove our innocence all the time on forms and stuff that we have to have to fill out. Um, my wife didn't sign up for that. Our employees didn't sign up for that. You know, that they are not government officials just because they work for us in some other capacity somewhere else. Now that that is a to me that's a that's a big problem and I would appreciate a no vote on this. Charlotte. Yes, Representative Douglas, you recognize. Charlotte Douglas. And I I do sympathize with that and I agree. But if someone is trying to get to me to influence a vote one of the best ways they can do it is through my family. And that's why that spousal relationship and, and money should be included in this. Because uh, Charlotte Douglas, she's doing a, I mean, she makes a great point. You know what? Here's the thing. This is all, I mean, my gosh, I thought I was going to get a question. What happens if Russia nukes Guam? <laughs> How's that going to affect things? I'm like, well, maybe I can call ambassador, former ambassador John Bolton and uh, come in here and have him testify. I'm like, this is good. I mean, they, they were trying to uh, doing mental gymnastics to try to figure out anything they could to get an excuse to vote against your bill. Today. No, Paul, you, you need to retract that statement to compare that to gymnastics and any of the same word. That's you should you should apologize to all gymnastics out there. <laughs> at, at some, Seriously. Uh, all right. So some of our headlines. We're talking with Senator Brian King. Yeah, we're, we're rolling in money. Uh, yeah. It's coming in. Bro. Arkansas governor revenue dip is likely. Uh, Arkansas Times picked up on this and said state money, something is about to hit the fan and it doesn't smell good. Mm-hmm. You've been saying that you came on my been program. saying it for two years. I just met with the governor. He acts like everything's okay. The plan needs to go forward. You can't even You can't even hit projections right now. I don't know what to to say about uh, this. You know, the the crime bill that we, you know, want to address crime. You know, we don't have the money. I want to try and find policy money. And let me tell you something. Some of the options I'm going to put out there, you guys may not like. But there has to be something done that we have to make our community safe again. And the biggest thing is repeat offenders. I showed him the spike in violent crime by the FBI. It goes up like this. Governor just looks at me like, why did that happen? He didn't know. I'm like, you just had your nephew spend two years and a bunch of tax dollars to study it, and you've come up with nothing. Did you use the word nephew? Yeah. You did? (laughs) Of course you did. Of course you did. Oh, that's fantastic. I don't know. I mean, I'm still perplexed about if if Russia nukes Guam. All right, so, but but, but we have the gorilla on top of the dome, and it's called Medicaid Medicaid expansion. But but the governor sit there, and I'm saying, Governor, you have said there's too many people on Medicaid. Have you seen anything out of him that's going to reduce the number of people on Medicaid? Have you seen anything that's Arkansas going to Arkansas works, Brian. The, Arkansas the, the, works. The same works program that almost half the people do not even work on. I said, Governor, is there something wrong that my 80-year-old dad, with two knee replacements, a rotator cuff surgery, works more hours in a week than 320,000 Arkansans, of which most of them are 50 years younger than him? I said, is there something wrong with that? So he wants to put them on a 20-hour work week. I'm like, 20 hours? Wow, Governor. I'm yeah. telling you what. I mean, i tell you what. Budget it, crisis. I mean, do you yeah, think you think it's going to be a budget crisis? He, he says we're going to be – everything's still going to be okay. Hell, you know. I, I'm like, it, it is just 
I, I, I don't even know what to say, Paul. I mean, and uh, once again, all they try and do is, is try and ram the budget bill through before the April numbers come out. Yeah. Unbelievable. All we right. should wait. We should wait until the end of May. You would get almost three real revenue reports in before you make your final determination. And uh, Yeah, they're not going to do that. They're not going to do it. Yeah. Senator Brian King, I appreciate it, sir. I appreciate your good work. And, you know, if anything, we've got a bunch of people on record mm-hmm. that need to be asked if they're getting any money for Medicaid entities now. Yeah, so. and I'm going to check into the uh, relations with Russia and Guam. <laughs> and uh, we'll get John Bolton on the show. Maybe you know John him. Bolton. Get I'm going to have to get now. some type of expert to find out how that's going to affect the fact that uh, Medicaid providers could be funneling money to legislators. Uh, I mean, that's 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 instrumental. Yeah. Senator Brian King, we appreciate it. Folks, we got to go to break. Back in a moment.